Thanks so much for tuning back into my channel. I share inexpensive DIYs and low manipulation techniques to both grow and sustain healthy natural hair. And today we're talking about what you need to do if your hair is repelling water. So ultimately, if you're wetting your hair and you notice that those water droplets are just politely rolling down your hair strand and not actually absorbing into your hair overall. There are definitely some things that you can try to remediate this issue and we're touching on everything in this video. My lily pops pop off. So I had to put my hair into a little makeshift ponytail because that little fro was not giving me on camera. But to hop into it, I just want to debunk some myths. A lot of people think that low porosity naturals are the only naturals that struggle with water absorption when it comes to the hair. And that's really not true. There are a few things that could be going on with your hair that are causing your strands to just say, no, no H2O is coming in today. Ultimately, things such as product buildup, chemical damage from relaxers or coloring treatments as well can really have an effect on whether your hair repels water or whether it absorbs water. So to hop into it, I struggled with this issue before because I am a low porosity natural. And before I figured out my hair porosity and really got in tune with my hair like that, I really was just using honestly what was most cost efficient for me at the time or what packaging looked nice as I was going through the store. It wasn't until I started learning more about my hair and ultimately the different benefits that products on the shelves and ingredients in the kitchen had that I really started to identify what would work best. So the first thing that I always emphasize is the use of aloe vera. And I'm specifically talking about the aloe vera gel. Aloe vera is also a humectant, which a lot of people don't know. And a humectant just really aids with pulling moisture into whatever it's applied to. So if you apply aloe vera gel to your hair, you're going to start to see a better effect with moisture altogether. And aloe vera gel actually penetrates into the hair strands. The ways that you can apply aloe vera is through a traditional pre-poo treatment, which is what a lot of naturals elect to do. I have three different aloe vera pre poo treatments that I've shared on this channel before they both do different things dependent on the additional ingredients that I add to them you can also opt to not go through the entire process of getting a full aloe vera leaf carving out the gel and going through that whole blending process and all of that there are stores that actually sell the raw aloe vera gel in a big container, I might add. I heard that it's pretty cost efficient and you can use that as well. You can dilute it in a spray bottle with some water and an aloe vera gel and use that as a refresher on your hair before you go into style. Next ingredient is honey which I shared on the channel last week. I touched on quite a few products that had honey in them and also made an all natural DIY pre-poo treatment out of honey and flax seed. So I'll kind of touch on those both things together. Honey is also a humectant, so it's going to help with moisture overall and it actually helps with luster and frizz as well. You can incorporate honey into your hair regimen through a pre-poo treatment as I just shared that I did last week during my wash day or you can include honey when creating all natural deep conditioners. That is where I use honey the most. When I'm creating my deep conditioners or my protein conditioners, honey is a staple ingredient that I frequently put into my DIYs. It does really well with holding everything together and again, it really helps with the water absorption on the hair. Then let's touch on flaxseed. So most of us know our beloved natural 85, that is Whitney, who is an extremely prominent natural hair YouTuber within this space. And Whitney years ago shared a flaxseed gel recipe on her channel that created a lot of buzz. And to this day, there are a lot of content creators that have used that recipe to create flaxseed gel at home to put on their hair. A lot of people tend to use flaxseed gel as a styler. It does even better as a pre-poo treatment or even a moisturizer. And a lot of people don't know that. Flaxseed is also a form of a humectant. I encourage you to explore flaxseed a bit more 
think about this you could use it as a pre-poo a moisturizer and a styler you're getting literally everything that you need out of one product which is great also glycerin so this one i'm going to give fair warning not everyone likes glycerin but you know and it's more sciencey there are actually some people that buy glycerin droplets and when they're creating their different all natural products for their natural hair at home they just apply the gl glycerin droplets into it i have not elected to go that far i'm not quite there in my you know DIY journey I haven't put glycerin into anything but I have been intentional about identifying products that have glycerin in them when I'm looking for a leave-in conditioner again I just referenced natural 85 and if you know natural 85 has the natural hair care brand known as melanin hair care the melanin hair care multi-use leave-in conditioner I can grab it right here for you guys this baby you guys can see I'm pretty low in it it actually has glycerin in it and again glycerin is another ingredient that has humectant properties so you're going to get that moisture it has glycerin in it so when i'm using this whether i'm rinsing it out and using it as a traditional conditioner whether i'm leaving it in and helping with styling and different things the glycerin also helps me with actually getting the moisture from the product just a few things that I want to say about glycerin. I could stop holding this up now. Some people don't like glycerin. It does give your hair a bit of like a tacky feeling, but I also feel like that may be due to naturals not really abiding to the directions on how much of a product you should use. People get into like heaping handfuls of product that ultimately are going to alter the final results that you have. So if you use a lot of a product, it may be crusty to you. Your hair may be sticky and things of that nature. I'm pretty modest when I use products so I typically don't have that issue but there was one time I overdid it on that particular product and my hair was sticky another thing about identifying products that have glycerin in them is that you have to pay attention to the other ingredients as well so for example this has many things in it so aloe vera jojoba seed oil argan oil wheat amino acids turnip root extract chamomile and different things like that these are all things that work well for my low porosity hair i have seen some other products that have glycerin in them that also have something like shea butter and i'm not against shea butter for styling but when it comes to moisture a heavy butter like shea butter actually prevents things from penetrating your hair. So it's kind of counterproductive when you think about it like that. So please don't only go to the back labels just simply looking for glycerin. Pay attention to the other products and determine if it's going to work well for your hair. I've also shared on my channel the way that you identify what works well is honestly identifying your hair porosity. You can look on Google to identify how you do the porosity test on your hair it's really easy it takes like five minutes honestly and then once you have that information then you can go on google again or you can reference my channel what which has more information for low porosity naturals which will tell you what specific ingredients work well for a specific hair porosity the next tip for combating your water absorption issues is to consider a detox treatment this tip is more so geared towards the naturals that don't necessarily identify as low porosity although i'm not excluding my low pose but this tip is geared towards those naturals that may be dealing with product buildup issues and when i say product buildup think about it twofold i'm not just saying the traditional leave-in conditioner that's been piled up because you haven't washed your hair in a while heavy butters and creams different stylers and things of that nature it doesn't only extend there think about left behind chemicals from color processing and relaxers as well that are still left behind on your scalp you want to properly cleanse those impurities and make sure that your hair pores are open 
so of course i'm always going to start on the more natural end first there are all natural detox treatments that you can create at home to properly cleanse your scalp a lot of people don't think of scalp as skin but it definitely is so the all natural detox treatments that you can try are things that have like lemon in it aloe vera even garlic i've shared a treatment on my channel before and i'll be sure to link it down in the description so be sure to check that out the next thing if you like to go and buy something but you're still kind of looking for something natural i would say to consider a bentonite clay this specific bentonite clay is pretty popular it is the health and beauty aztec secret indian healing clay and it is known as the world's most powerful facial again i just said that scalp is skin so when you think about deep cleansing your pores you have to do the same for your scalp and this will get everything up i promise you you just take there's actually powder in here you get a good amount you just take the powder add water to it mix it up you can add oils if you want to apply it to your hair let it harden wash it out and then you must follow up with an intense hydration treatment that you can get through a traditional deep conditioner i would always suggest that you just don't do the deep conditioner for 30 minutes after using the Indian healing clay opt for something a little longer if you can like an hour hour and a half and you also can apply heat to your hair if that works for you or if you're like me and you don't like heat make sure that you baggy your hair up to get the full effect um, that's something that is extremely important if you're thinking about something that's more you know main line main event just think about a traditional detox shampoo i know specifically like shea moisture has one there are a few other brands that have um detox shampoo or intense clarifying shampoos those are also under the bucket of detox shampoos as well consider doing that but you need to cleanse that scalp and cleanse those strands to make sure that you can absorb the water and the last and final tip is to change up how you're applying your products. So a lot of the time when I come on here, you know, I'm styling outside of the shower if my hair is like wet or I let it dry a little bit or there's even been a few times where I've like taken you guys into the shower and let you see my process in there as well. But majority of the time when it is my wash day and I'm applying a leave-in conditioner, I do that step in the shower for a few reasons. One, I am a jiffy natural, meaning that I like efficient processes. I don't like stepping in, stepping out, doing all of this. And also the steam from the shower. Now this is if you're one of the people that, you know, trends towards the warmer or hot showers. The steam from the shower really helps with absorption of products, okay? And I know we're specifically talking about water absorption, but because a lot of the leave-in conditioners that we're using, well, a lot of the leave-in conditioners that you should be using are water-based products, they also need to be absorbed into your hair. So if you're having issues with water, you're likely having issues with product application and absorption as well. And I have found that the steam from the shower really helps with absorption. So I will just go through the process of applying the leave-in and go on and get myself together with like bathing myself and things of that nature and just allow the leave-in to absorb into my hair then when i exit the shower i traditionally get into styling and all of that other good stuff I hope that this has been helpful overall i know the water repellent issues is not something that is really touched on outside of the context of the low porosity natural but the reality is we're not the only ones that deal with it and you're not alone with that if you have any special circumstances that are going on with your hair and you started identifying the water repellent issues please let me know down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to address those special circumstances because I know um a day ago there was someone that reached out and basically says she started noticing the difference in her hair's ability to absorb water after coloring her hair
and that is not surprising as well because you've altered the texture of your hair and your hair will start reacting differently to products that it once used to love and things of that nature so if there's any more tips that I can provide specifically to you or anyone else please let me know my lily pops pop off <laughs>